Hello, this is Sully Taylor with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide or listening to our podcast. We are here today to talk with candidates running in the November 8th, 2022 general election. We are grateful to the support of, of the Carol and Velma Sailing Foundation, the League of Women Voters of Portland Education Fund, the WISE Foundation, and our media partner, Metro East Community Media. With me is Dacia Graber, who is running for Oregon State House of Representatives, representing District 28, which covers Southwest Portland, generally south of Highway 26, and west and north of I-5. Welcome, Representative Graber. Thank you, Sully. Please tell us, to begin with, a little about yourself and why you were running for this office. Great. Thanks again for the opportunity. I love this opportunity to get in front of voters in a nonpartisan neutral manner. So I uh, decided to run for office. I was actually, um, I don't want to say tagged in, but it was suggested to me by the outgoing representative in 2020, Representative Margaret Doherty. She had spent years of seeing me show up in Salem advocating for different issues. And I come to this service with almost 23 years now as a firefighter and paramedic, uh, a union activist. Uh, I served on the union's equity and inclusion board for years. I spent time serving on the state seismic policy advisory. Commission, and I've been very active and involved in working with our youth as a track coach and then doing outreach services with Just Compassion for Housing and Homelessness. So it was all these things, uh, seeing people professionally in the most vulnerable moments and, and really kind of peeling back the layers of what's affecting our community that moved me to running for office. Also, I'm proudly the mom of four kids. I, they are now four incredible teenagers who went to uh, one more still at Ida B. Wells. But all these things were like, I have a voice that that's unique in the legislature and I'm, I'm proud to run. So I did and I won and I currently serve. I am uh, one of the assistant majority leaders for the Democratic Caucus. I'm the chair of the Veterans and Emergency Management Committee, vice chair of business and labor. And I also serve on the Public Safety Ways and Means Subcommittee and the Wildfire Recovery Committee. I'm just getting going. I had an incredible first term passing some really transformative legislation. And I'm asking for the voters to send me back to continue that work that's really grounded in real world experience. Thank you very much. Um, the second question is, do you support or oppose the gun safety measure, measure 114, on the November ballot? Please explain your answer. So one of the things that prompted me to run for office was in those years, and I'm still serving as a firefighter and paramedic, I've seen more incidences of gun violence. And that was the very first thing that brought me to Salem to show up and testify. And uh, it has been, I've been a longtime member of Moms Demand Action, and I've shown up and I believe that uh, we are not doing enough. So I'm proud to have supported Senate Bill 554 and been one of the chief sponsors of that for secure storage, but it's not enough. Currently, gun violence is the number one uh, cause of death for children 19 and under, and that is unacceptable in Oregon. And I think any measure we can take to reduce gun violence is worth investing in. And I'm very proud and honored to live in a state where the voters can bring a, a ballot initiative, and I do wholeheartedly support Measure 114. I don't think there is such a thing as a perfect measure, but I think that every step we take, and, and uh, I will I will enthusiastically support that. I know it may have some constitutional challenges. Um, it may be um, it may go to court, and I look forward to that process. And I also look forward to continuing the process as a legislator of working on common sense gun violence legislation, gun violence prevention legislation that really centers Oregon values. Thank you. You are listening to the Video Voters Guide interview and podcast of Dacia Graber, who is running for um, Oregon State House of Representatives, District 28. So following on that question, what steps, if any, should the legislature take to address the climate emergency and the impacts for Oregonians? Uh, I don't want to equivocate my answer at all. Climate change is the existential threat of this generation, and I think we have kicked the can down the road 
too, too far too often and we need to step up and that's imperative for my children and their children to come. So we've done some really amazing things as a state. You know, we've passed the, the uh, carbon reduction, the 2040 goals where we're working on healthy buildings, but it's not enough. And so I think ways that empower Oregonians to take steps, everyday steps in their own lives to sort of regulatory steps like we've taken with polluters, it's really important to keep going on that and keep pushing. So we really need to continue to prioritize the zero carbon emissions. I think uh, moving towards more electrification of the grid and ensuring that the grid is, is wholly able to support and respond to that is absolutely um, paramount. And then personally, I've, of course, been very involved in legislation involving climate change from the wildfire perspective. Very proud to have been part of a Senate bill that looks at mitigating some of those issues, putting more people on the ground so we can put those fires out, and also bringing, bringing other resources in and looking at uh, sustainable ways of using our lands. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so another question is, what more could Oregon do to help people move into safe and stable housing? Uh, so many. <laughs> we could spend a half hour on this question. I think that the legislature's really earmarked a lot of uh, really remarkable funding for this, but we're not seeing it take effect yet. So bringing a lens of transparency, accountability, and oversight to the money that we've sent out, we need to continue moving with that. And it, it's not a zero-sum game. We sometimes have two schools of thought that it's either sheltering or permanent housing. I see it as a spectrum where we're moving people from the streets to shelter, but then with wraparound services, ensuring that they have addiction recovery care, mental health care, uh, education support, social support, and move them into permanent housing. And then, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the fact that the most important thing we can do as a state is keep people who are housed in their housing. We see this in my district right now with Woodspring Apartments, with senior housing that's been affordable coming to market rate. So innovative solutions, investments to make sure that people don't lose the housing that they're in now are absolutely imperative. And then really a dealing, um, addressing skyrocketing rent rates and, and, and uh, the cost of living for folks is a piece of that as well. So we have a lot of work to do. We have our work cut out and I'm, I'm Proud to be part of a group of people that's not afraid to take big, bold initiatives in this. Now let's see it come to fruition. Great. Thank you very much, uh, mm -hmm. Representative Graber. Uh, this concludes our video voters guide and podcast interview of Dacia Graber, who's running for Oregon State House of Representatives, District 28. Um, election day is Tuesday, November 8th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for your interest.